Psalms, Part 3, Temple Songs. The Book of Psalms is a collection of songs and prayers used to praise and worship God. This lesson is about the third group of poems and tells how Israel celebrated God's power, sovereignty, and faithfulness to them. These psalms remind us that we are to worship the Almighty God continually. Do you play a musical instrument? Some children learn to play an instrument as part of their education. Some musical instruments might be the piano, a trumpet, or maybe a saxophone, a guitar, or a violin, or maybe even some drums. It is a lot of fun to learn to play these instruments. Music is an important way for people to express their thoughts and emotions. We use music in our churches to help us worship God. One way to serve God is to play an instrument during the song service. Many of the songs that we sing in our services come from the book of Psalms. During the time that David was king of Israel, he gave jobs to many people. Most of these jobs were in the temple. David gave Asaph a special job of leading the music in the temple. In this lesson, we are going to learn about some of the songs that Asaph wrote in Book 3 of Psalms. The book of Psalms is found in the middle of the Bible. It is the second book in the Old Testament group of books called poetry. Let's say the books of poetry, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. Psalms is the longest book in the Bible. It has 150 chapters. So we are going to divide this book into five parts. The first part is book one, creation. Book two, God's help. Book three, temple songs. Book four, God's plan to obey. And book five, praising God and his word. The first book of Psalms covers chapters 1 to 41. It speaks about creation and how God meets all of our needs. It is like the book of Genesis. It teaches us about God's eternal love and care for us and how we should trust him, even in the day-to-day -day experiences of life. The second book of Psalms covers chapters 42 to 72 and talks about God's help in times of trouble. It is like the book of Exodus. Many of these songs focus on God's protection of Israel from their enemies. One of these songs is Psalm 46, and it tells how God is our refuge and strength. This song may have been written during the days of Hezekiah, when God saved Israel from the Assyrians by sending the death angel to the enemy camp and killing 185,000 men in one night. The third part of Psalms is Psalm 73 to 89. These poems tell how Israel celebrated God's power, sovereignty, and faithfulness to them, 
and show us how to worship the Almighty God. Most of these songs were written by Asaph. During the time that David was king of Israel, he wanted the people of Israel to worship God. He restored worship in the tabernacle and put the tribe of Levi in charge of the sacrifices and leading the people in worship. King David gave Asaph, a son of Levi, the special job of leading the music in the tabernacle. Asaph and some other men led all the people in singing and playing instruments to praise God. Some of the instruments they played were harps, lyres, and cymbals. Asaph even wrote some special songs to praise God. These songs are found in Book 3 of Psalms. Later, when Asaph's sons grew up, they led the music in the temple, too. Book 3 of Psalms is like the book of Leviticus. Just as Leviticus tells about the tabernacle and God's holiness, the Psalms discuss God's sovereignty and how he sits on the throne. Because God is holy and almighty, we can praise him for his power over all things. After Israel built the tabernacle in the wilderness, according to the directions that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai, the glory of the Lord came down and filled the tabernacle. God's presence then filled the tabernacle. A great light shone from the Holy of Holies. The cloud of God was over it by day. The Israelites, when they were camped, would see the cloud and know that God was with them. At night, the fire of God shone from the tabernacle. This light showed that God was protecting and guiding his people. They could trust him and not be afraid. Just as Israel could see God's presence with them, we too are to remember that God is awesome and powerful and with us today. God sits on his throne in heaven and he is in control of all things. The first song in book three is Psalm 73. It was written by Asaph, the leader of the temple choir, during the time of King David. It describes a time that Asaph began to doubt God. In Psalm 73, Asaph said, Truly, God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. Asaph almost gave up living for God because he looked around and noticed that those who were not followers of God seemed to be better off than he was. Asaph became envious because it seemed that God treated bad people better than God treated him. It just didn't seem fair to him. In verses 13 to 16, Asaph was so discouraged that he asked, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? 
I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. Asaph began to think that it just didn't pay to live for God. He just might as well do wrong like everybody else. Sometimes we might feel like Asaph did, that it does not make any difference if we do right or not. Others get by with doing wrong. Yet you do right, and it seems like God is punishing us. But Asaph did the thing that all of us should do. He talked to God about this problem. Then God helped Asaph see things differently. He began to look at things the way God sees them. And God helped him to see that he was sovereign and that in the end of all time, those who are evil would be punished. In Psalm 73, Asaph wrote, So I try to understand why the wicked prosper. What a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Although it may seem for a while that the wicked are winning, in the end, God will judge all men. Asaph understood that God is sovereign and is in control of all things. He recognized that God was still with him. Psalm 73, 23 and 24, Asaph says, Yet I am always with you. Hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Asaph began to thank God for his presence with him and how God would, in the end, bring the ultimate victory to those who obey him. He concluded the psalm by saying, But as for me, it is good to be near to God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. So Asaph went back to the tabernacle and began to proclaim to all the people the importance of obeying God. He reminded the people of God's love and mercy on Israel in the past by writing many songs of praise to God for his power and salvation. In Psalm 77, 12 to 15, Asaph wrote, I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty army, you redeemed your people. God had totally changed Asaph's perspective. He was no longer discouraged and despondent. Asaph began to lead the people of God in songs of great joy as he directed the temple choir. These songs reminded Israel how God had been with them from bringing them up out of slavery in Egypt to their nation under the throne of King David. Now Asaph could write with great joy in Psalm 84.10, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For no good thing does he withhold from those who walk blamelessly. 
Has there been a time in your life when you felt like Asaph and wondered if God is really at work? Perhaps you feel left out among your friends. They were planning things to do that you knew were not what God wanted you to do. Do we desire to always do what is right and please God, even when others don't? God can help us see things the way he does. God is pleased when his children obey him. Be like Asaph and ask God to help you see that he is in control of all things and that he will give you the strength to do what is right. But no matter whether we live now or back in the time of the Israelites, God wanted his people to praise him with songs and musical instruments. Singing the Psalms is a wonderful way to worship God. Let's sing a song from Psalm 77, 12 to 14. It expresses what the book of Psalms is all about, praising God. Did you listen to the words of that song? You were singing about God. Music is like a language. We can use music to tell a story. The Jews celebrated the faithfulness of God through music. The nation of Israel had a right to be happy. They were God's chosen people. They were the nation into whom God chose to have his son Jesus be born. In Psalm 78, Asaph, one of the song leaders in the temple, reminds the people how important it is for them to remember their history. Psalm 78, 1 and 5 through 7 say, O oh my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. God decreed statues for Jacob and the established the law in the Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children. So the next generation would know them 
even the children yet to be born. And they would in turn tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. In this psalm, Asaph is reminding Israel that God gave laws for them to follow so they would teach their children and future generations about God's great works and keep his commandments. Often the Jewish leaders would use songs or psalms to remind the people of God's promises to them. The Jewish people sang about their history and the way that God had blessed them. Music is a way that we show honor to God. When Asaph led the people into the temple, they sang. The temple was the sanctuary of God, or where the presence of God was. When you entered the sanctuary, you were talking to God, and he was talking to you. Singing the song that Asaph wrote help the people remember that God is great and holy. Music can also act like a medicine to make us feel better when we are sad or discouraged. When Asaph led the people in song, he was encouraging them the same way that the people of Israel were encouraged, we can be encouraged too. Did you ever think about singing your prayer to God? Well, many of the worship songs we sing in church sound like prayers. Sometimes, instead of just saying our prayers, we could sing our prayers. It's just another way to show God how much you love Him. Psalms 86, 8 to 10 is a prayer to God. Let's sing it. Music is a great way to praise God. Praise means recognizing the awesomeness of God and all that he has done. 
Music is a great way to learn the commands of God. Music is a great way to encourage us. God wants us to worship him in song. Our memory verse is Psalms 89.1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. This verse teaches us to thank God for his forgiveness of our sin and the gift of salvation. It encourages us to share the good news of his mercy and grace with everyone. It helps us look forward to the time when Jesus will reign from the throne of David as the King of Kings. Let's say our verse again together. Psalms 89.1 I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of music and songs. Help us to use these gifts to praise you. Help us to remember to praise you and thank you for your faithfulness to us. You have promised to always be with us. You have given us the wonderful gift of salvation. Help us to always honor you and give glory for all that you have done. In your name we pray, amen. Remember, make music and praise to God, an important part of your worship.